Welcome back, Cavs fans. Welcome back. I told you I'll do these after some big games, and man, this was a good one. Entertaining the entire way through. It was a barn burner. Cavs win versus the Sixers, 114 to 117. Cavs win. Huge games from Evan Mobley and George Niang. Those are the two guys I'm going to focus on, and then just kind of talk about the team's late game execution as a whole. And then just looking ahead, because now we got this brutal road trip against some of the Western Conference elite. And this is where we're going to see what this team is really made of. They looked a little ugly at points tonight. They've looked ugly in the past few weeks, honestly, a month. So I need this team to get back to where they were in January and December. That's where we need to be. But let me just start. I'll start with George Niang, and then I'll get to clutch-ass Evan Mobley here. But George Niang, 25 points, 10 of 14 from the floor, 5 of 8 from 3. Just seemed like every shot he put up was in. Um, I think a thing that every Cavs fan thought when we were signing Niang, because, I mean, we only really watched him when they played the Sixers and the Sixers in the playoffs. So I just didn't really ever see him attacking off the dribble. He's good at it. Like, he's slow and he's whatever, and he's George Niang. But he's really attacked off the dribble really, really well. He uses his body position really, really well. Um, that's something you have to be able to do, especially if you're not the quickest or fastest guy. We've seen Luca and people like that. Obviously, I'm not comparing them to their two games, but Luca's his body position is so good. I'm not saying George is like that, but you have to be able to have an element of that. And George has done it. Like he scored three, two or three layups on the inbound just simply by having his body position where they were. And on Kyle Lowry, he should have got fouled on one of them late in the game. Just a lot of stuff that you just don't really see from a guy like George Yang unless he's on your team and you watch him every night. So, I mean, that game was needed um, from him and second highest scoring of his career. I think the earlier this season versus the bucks was his career high. I think this is his second highest total ever. Um, then Evan Mobley, man, holy shit. Um, definitely had some rough moments where he was just seemed like he was getting bitched around a little bit, but I mean, Hit, I mean, the balls, the balls to take that corner three down one. Fuck it. Oh my God. Middle of the shot clock, just corner three, bam. Um, contested. Like they sagged off. They're like, oh, should I contest? Should I contest? Nope. You got to. You have to now. You have to now. Two for two from three, 20 points, 11 boards, three assists, four of six from the line, seven to 10 from the floor. Just like really good. Like he was had zero field goals in the first half. So he had two points in the first half. 18 in the second half. I don't know the fourth quarter numbers, but it seemed like he had a hell of a lot. It really felt like a 2021 Cavs, 22, 2021, 2022 Cavs game. It was Darius Garland and Evan Mobley working down the stretch of games with a random bench player or someone just going off and helping them get over the finish line, like a George Niang or a Kevin Love would do in the past. Like it just was one of those games. Um, but yeah, I mean, Evan just, I thought played really, really well. Um, but I mean, Darius had his moments. I think late game, we've been kind of critical of him because he's turned it over a lot. He's missed some shots where I feel like those should be butter. And he had one turnover. He got the back poke and Maxi made a hell of a layup off of it to put the Sixers back up one. But 14 and 12 today, 6 of 12 from the floor. Not the most flashy, crazy game. But he just made the right plays today, and I don't know what it is. I just feel like now he's gotten so used to playing with Donovan that when he's out there, it just is a, another element that teams have to be able to guard. So it just propels Darius to really be himself in these moments where he can just kind of flow. And I think that we were missing that for the month or so that feels like Donovan was out for. So... I mean, Darius, I'll give him a B plus for this game. I don't think it was anything crazy. It wasn't Darius Garland dropping 30 like back in the day, it feels like, but or earlier this season. But I mean, really good game from the Cavs on the offensive end for their standards. I think the offense flowed a lot better visually. Like there wasn't so many clunky moments like we've seen, especially like we scored one basket in the last five minutes versus the Hornets, which I couldn't even do a post game for that video. I was so fucking mad. But um We'll go on to just the game as a whole. The Cavs ended up shooting 55% from the floor. Like, we were able to get the looks that we want. The issue was this game was close. We got out rebounded 50 to 44, 16 offensive rebounds given up. That is inexcusable. It's the reason we lost to the Knicks. It's the reason we're going to continue to lose games. If we can rebound, and, and at points during this season, we were the number one or top three in rebounding, we have to be able to 
grab these rebounds. It has to be a priority. It has to be the most important thing. I know our offense has been a little bit lethargic in the half court, but Donovan Mitchell is on his way back, albeit with some current concerns, which I will get to. But the rebounding has to be, I think, the number one priority. This team gets destroyed on offensive rebounds, and every time it just feels like they get a basket out of it. Every time. And I know that's the case for most offensive rebounds, but it's every time. We do such a good job of running them off the line, forcing them into our bigs, and then the weak side rebound is just wide open, and it happens every time. The long rebounds, the guards are not hustling for the ball. It has to be a team effort. It has to be. And going forward this can't happen again you're playing some of the best rebounding and big men in the league right this upcoming stretch you're playing Jokic and you're playing ad you can't give this up you absolutely cannot give this up this you'll get run out of the gym so going forward please 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 fix this because it's really really starting to annoy me because i can't go through what i did last year and i know you guys can't either but um yeah i mean 40 43 percent from three um, just unbelievable defense on like the keys to the game to me were hold Maxi and Kelly Oubre to subpar shooting. And boy, did they do it? Um, uh, Maxi seven of 26, two of 12 from three. He ended with 16 and 11 Kelly Oubre, two of 11, four points. Like that's really, really, really good work. Everyone else kind of had a good game on the Sixers, So I'll give them credit for that. Mo Bamba with 14 and seven Tobias Harris with 21 and seven. Um, Kyle Lowry was really, really good in this game. Something I did not see coming, but 23 points in six times, four of eight from three, seven to 12 from the four or five free throws. So like they, they executed the game plan and some of those things where the role players are just shooting. Well, like that stuff's going to happen and you just kind of have to live with it, but let's kind of look ahead here and just talk about what I'm really expecting from this team going forward. Um, Right now, the Knicks are playing the Spurs, and they are the Knicks are down three right now with five and a half minutes left. So I, you guys won't know when the games, or you guys will see the score after this video is uploaded, hopefully. But I mean, just really, really concerning um, that we dropped out of the three because I think we need to be a two or three seed. In like, it has to be that. I'm fine with the first round matchup if we get the four. That's fine. The difference is the second round. I don't want to see Boston. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't think anyone does. So going forward, that is number one thing. Keep, if you keep winning your games and the Knicks, if the Knicks drop this, you guys are even, you have the same record and you just, if you have the tiebreaker, so you just have to go and handle your business. Every game they lose, you can lose one, but as long as you have the same record, you will be the three seed. So let's keep that where it is. Um, another thing to look at over this next six game stretch what is Donovan Mitchell going to look like coming into the playoffs? And last season, Donovan came, came in shooting the shit out of the ball, dropping 40 points in, in a row four times, I think it was, going into the playoffs, and he didn't have the best series. And I just can't do what we saw again last year. And he did not look great this game. I know it's his first game back after all the various injuries, his nose injury and his knee um, PCP shot. But... He has to get right. This team's not going to go anywhere without Donovan Mitchell. Just him having the gravity on the court, even if he was playing poorly tonight, is so helpful. So we need him to be healthy, but we also need him to be Donovan Mitchell. So going forward, I like if he has to sit and miss a game, fine. If But he just has to be able to beat guys off the dribble. That was one of the things that he went back out for after the knee injury, also for the nose. But after the knee injury, he was saying he just couldn't explode and beat guys off the dribble like he's used to. And that is something that we desperately need because we can't allow our only rim pressure to be Karis Levert, who sometimes just goes too far and misses layups, or Darius Garland, who recently has been a little more turnover prone than you would like. So it needs to be able to be Donovan Mitchell being Donovan Mitchell. So I think those are the two biggest things to look out for. And we got to win some games on this stretch. We got to go at least... Um, Four and two. Got to go four and two. Have to. I'll read through the schedule for you guys that don't know, and then we'll wrap this video up, and we'll talk, probably talk another one after Sunday night if we beat the Nuggets. But Sunday, we play the Nuggets at 3.30. Then Tuesday, we got the Jazz. Wednesday, we got the Suns. Saturday and Sunday, Lakers, Clippers. It's a six-game stretch. It's going to be tough. I think four and two is reasonable for this team. I think that we should win four games. I think that's how good this team is. And then... 
From there, if we go four and two, I think that puts us in a pretty p- good position to handle business and secure that three seed, which I know we all want. So yeah, that's it for this one. But like, comment, subscribe, and go check out Matt's tears, baby. Cavs videos. Are-